welcome to this evening's EU referendum debate. My name is Trudy McGuinness, I'm your chair for this evening, and um, it's my great pleasure to welcome all of the panellists that we've got here this evening. We've got those on my right, on your left, advocating for the Remain campaign, and on my left, your right, advocating for Leave. And to introduce, um, firstly, we've got Jeremy Lefroy, who's the MP for Stafford. Very warm welcome to Jeremy. We've got Mike Poulter, MBE, who's an alderman, who himself was um, very, very politically active and was an opponent of Bill Cash, uh, MP, back in 1984. Mm -hmm. And we've got <laughs> Gareth Snell, who is a Unison manager and former leader of Newcastle Borough Council. And over here, speaking for the Leave campaign, we have Graham Stevenson, who is very much a leading light in the Lexit campaign, um, and a, a communist um, uh, member from Birmingham. And then we also have Dave Nellist, who is the former MP for Coventry South East. He was MP from 1983 to 1992, and both Graham and Dave are going to be representing uh, the Leave campaign this evening. Before we get things further underway, I'm going to ask all of you very kindly, please, if you would join me in standing for a minute's silence and recognition of the terrible death of Joe Cox in the past week. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. So, I'm going to begin over here, firstly, with the Remain campaign, simply because of numbers. Um, and I'm going to invite Jeremy Lefroy, MP, firstly, to explain for up to five minutes, I'm going to get my watch ready, um, as to why, Jeremy, you believe that we should remain in the EU when we come to vote this Thursday. Uh, thank you very much, Trudy, and thank you for inviting me. I'm just going to cover uh, four areas, really, on the economy, on immigration, on sovereignty, and on cooperation. On the economy, it's, it's, it's incredibly important uh, for me and for my constituents, because I want to see my constituents prosper, I want to see them thrive, and it's quite clear from what's come out from most of the uh, econ economists over the last five or six weeks that the United Kingdom will do better being in the EU than out of, of the EU. Now, I'm not going to make any big claims about how much £4,000 a family, I don't believe we can say those kind of things, but I think it's quite clear that access to the single market and trading in the kind of way that we do with our fellow Europeans means that we are likely to see better economic growth inside rather than outside. Even the Leave campaign talk about a big economic shock if we pull out, followed by growth which they say would eventually overtake what we would have if we stay in. I certainly believe in the economic shock. I'm not so convinced about the growth overtaking in the long term. So for my constituents, I believe that they'll be better off by remaining in, in the long term. If we turn now um, to inward investment, the UK receives an awful lot of inward investment because of its situation being here in the European Union. And that in turn drives the economy, it drives tax receipts, and therefore supports public services. Turning to immigration, um, this has clearly been a big issue. I am a firm believer that it would not make a huge difference 
whether we were in or out in terms of the level of immigration. Why do I say that? Because we find that the people who come here to work, by and large, come here for jobs that are available and that aren't being filled, whether it's in the NHS, whether it's in manufacturing, whether it's in agriculture. And I also believe that immigration over the last um, 20 or 30 years, by and large, has been beneficial for the United Kingdom. It does create its own pressures. I fully understand that, and I think the, the measures that the Prime Minister achieved with the renegotiation will help a bit with that. I don't think they probably go far enough, and there will probably be, have, to, have to be some more work done on that, and I think other countries in the European Union are feeling the same way. So I can't come out and say absolutely that the situation we've got at the moment is perfect, but it's certainly not the way it's being presented uh, by uh, our, our opponents. If we were to um, have uh, much lower levels of immigration, we would see major impacts on our public services in areas where we simply do not, at the moment, uh, have the skills. Turning to sovereignty, it's quite clear to me the United Kingdom is sovereign in all the main areas that uh, we deal with, whether it's our NHS, nobody else has an NHS, we're not forced to have a German system or a French system, we have our own NHS, we have our own education system, in fact we have two, we have a Scottish system, we have an English, Welsh and Northern Irish system, we're not required to have any other systems, we decide on that, we decide on levels of expenditure, on defence, on education, health, the Germans and French spend more than us on health. I would prefer us to spend more than we do, but that's our decision, that's not an EU decision. And finally, cooperation. I believe it's essential to cooperate with people. And working within the European Union, while not perfect, provides a very important way to cooperate with our neighbours. We may not agree with them on everything, but it's a lot better to cooperate and to work with them inside the European Union than be sitting on the outside. Thank you very much indeed, thank you. And I should have said earlier to the audience as well, I will be inviting you to come in after the, um, the panellists have given their, um, their speeches and to ask questions, so do get your questions stored up and ready. Next up, I'm going to invite Dave Nellis to give us your views, please, Dave, on why you believe that Britain should leave the EU. Well, thank you, Trudy, and thank you to the uh, in Staffordshire for inviting me to come to what is a welcome uh, opportunity to concentrate on the serious issues of this referendum as they affect working class people and as we've already heard uh, from, uh, uh, from Jeremy, not in the hateful manner that much of this debate regretfully has been conducted. My point to this, the EU is fundamentally undemocratic. Um, its laws are proposed from an unelected commission, um, which you could uh, say was an analogous to the House of Lords. The final say on those Lords are by heads of government, 28 uh, states, 27 of which we didn't uh, elect. The European Parliament can only comment on the uh, legislation it can't amend, and the House of Commons Library has said that up to 55% of laws which are, uh, uh, apply in, in Britain have originally come from the European uh, Commission. The EU is an employers' union, that's how it was set up, and certainly since the last 25 years of Maastricht and Lisbon and other significant treaties, it's moved faster down that uh, road. It entrenches capitalism, it puts public ownership and uh, issues such as renationalisation further out of, uh, of reach. Uh, recent uh, uh, statements, for example, through the uh, uh, Copenhagen uh, criteria mean that all new uh, member states uh, have to prove a functioning uh, uh, market or capitalist uh, uh, economy. Uh, it allows the free movement of capital, that's one of the central four pillars of the EU, so uh, whereas Jeremy has spoken of inward investment in the health of the UK uh, economy, we see it in a different uh, light. In Coventry, for example, we lost 3,000 Peugeot uh, jobs, well-paid car manufacturing uh, jobs to Slovakia, um, and factory was closed down and effectively rebuilt in that country after 73 million euros of euro uh, uh, aid, uh, because the wage rates in Slovakia are 200 pound a week, substantially lower than 500 pound a week in, uh, in Coventry. And for a, an EU that's said by many remain spokers to be uh, a protector of workers' uh, rights, hopefully an area we'll get onto in more detail uh, as the uh, debate uh, goes on, the richest four, uh, 34 countries on the planet, the OECD, uh, have an employment protection <coughs> index, uh, and Britain is 31st out of 34 when it comes to the ease of closing down factories or of sacking uh, workers in this uh, country. The, the EU puts limits on public spending. Uh, Britain is one of the two main countries not in the Euro, but many of our public spending decisions since the early 1990s have followed a pattern 
that will enable uh, uh, eventual membership of the euro, particularly what's called the Maastricht uh, criteria. It limits public spending, public borrowing. It, 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 it even means every, every council has to look over its shoulder on the question of state aid. We, in, in Coventry, have a hedge fund that owns and runs the Coventry City Football Club, which is currently suing Coventry's Labour Council because it's spent public money on a public asset it owns, namely the Rico Football Stadium in, uh, in Coventry. And many other councils have to look over their shoulder in a similar uh, uh, way. Um, the laws of the EU can't be changed unless there is unanimity uh, amongst the uh, 28 uh, uh, states. I want to see a new form of internationalism, so that forced migration, so that wars, so that climate change can be dealt with through socialist cooperation, not through uh, capitalist institutions like the European Union. And I don't think that is possible through the institutions of the EU uh, itself. And as they uh, uh, sign more trade uh, deals with different parts of the world, uh, the Canadian one is about to come online as, as a minor uh, precursor to the major uh, one called TTIP. Again, I hope we get into discussion about that with uh, uh, America. The rules and regulations that uh, bring uh, in will, will make it harder for, for socialist change to take uh, uh, place. So my last minute, three reasons to vote leave on Thursday. Remove the obstacle that would stop us doing uh, for example, the renationalisation of rail or postal services or of gas or water or electricity would stop us nationalising uh, steel if we had a government led by someone like Jeremy Corbyn that wanted to take those uh, uh, roads. Take us out of the orbit of these trade deals like uh, uh, TTIP, which threaten accelerated privatisation in, uh, in the health service and in education, something which Unison has written quite a deal uh, uh, about. And stop the EU undermining uh, the trade union rights and rates of, uh, of pay through a succession of uh, ECJ rulings, which again we might have time to explore in, in, in detail. The last sentence we're not leaving Europe on Thursday, we're leaving the EU. With a, the other, there are plenty of other ways in which we can cooperate on a continental basis without being hamstrung by a capitalist club for big employers which does not have the interests of working people at its heart. Thank you very much indeed, Dave. Thank you, much appreciated. I'm going to come on now to Mike Poulter, MB, and invite you, Mike, to tell us all why it is that you believe that the UK should remain in the EU. Thank you, Trudy. <coughs> I was born. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I was born in the middle of the Second World War, and um, my grandparents had fought in the First World War, and my parents had fought in the Second World War. When I was growing up, my mother actually believed that my generation would be fighting another war in 25 years. And she and my father, who was wounded in Italy, were convinced that my children would be fighting another war in their 25 years. The war, both the First World War and the Second World War, bankrupted our country, bankrupted Great Britain, and we lost our empire. We were bankrupt. And indeed, so was Europe. Significantly, the European countries decided that the devastating wars of the last centuries, which had destroyed their livelihoods, destroyed their people, should not happen again. And therefore, they got together with the European steel and coal community, and then turned it into a commercial, an industrial, and a, a trading organization. <coughs> which has, in fact, preserved the peace for the last 70 years. And that is a funda fundamental issue, I think, facing us all today. It's a matter of jaw jaw and not war war, because we can fight over regulations, we can discuss laws, rather than going into battle and wasting the lives of our youths um, within, certainly at this stage, the European continent. So that is a major bonus. Britain, after its bankruptcy through these world wars, was in fact um, the poor man or poor person nowadays of Europe. It felt through Harold Macmillan and Ted Heath, Ted Heath that it should join the European community. That was a right decision on their part. Because over the last 43 years since we've been in Europe, our gross domestic product has increased 103%, which has made us improve in terms of economically much better than Germany and France over the same period of time. 
<coughs> so that, that, that's a major, major bonus which we should not lose. And I would ask you not to lose. <coughs> so the benefits are there. We are a prosperous country because we joined the European community. We are not at war because we joined. Because, in fact, the European community has saved us from that, 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 uh, those dangers. And I would then say another fundamental point. The fact that Jeremy Corbyn, whom um, Dave Nellis had mentioned, is actually agreeing with somebody else whom I think he has little regard for, David Cameron, that the way forward in, is in Europe, but the way forward is to transform it, I agree with Dave Nellis, in a socialist way. I think we're halfway on a journey, and we should not give up on that journey. And I agree with Jeremy Lefroy that, in fact, the devastation created by a Brexit vote on Thursday would be utterly fundamental and um, would be destructive of our economy and destructive of the futures, impinge very heavily on the futures of our children and our grandchildren. So it's no war, jaw jaw, not war. Um, the European economy benefits us so significantly that it is foolish to move out to stand alone. Because after our wars, after we lost our empire, we can no longer stand alone. We must be in it all together. But it is for a reshaping future uh, of Europe, and I believe to develop a socialist Europe um, with our young people enthralled, engaged, as they have been, <coughs> as they've recently joined the Labour Party in their journeys. Thank, Thank you very much indeed, Thank you. And so, moving on now to Graham Stevenson. Graham, um, we invite you to give us your up to five minutes on why we should leave the EU. Well, thanks very much. Um, you know, the, there's that old saying, isn't there? If voting changed anything, they had done it. And I've never really quite agreed with that, but you know, I'm beginning to wonder whether anything will really change. You know, everybody seems to think that there's this massive, enormous civilization defining moment about to take place. You remember the French vote on the European Constitution? The Irish? Well, the European Commission's got form here, it's got record. Go away and vote again until you uh, come up with a decision that we like, is what it tends to do. I don't know what will happen on, on Thursday. I'm told by the bookies that uh, two-thirds of the money on um, us coming out, uh, on us remaining, is coming from Remain supporters, and uh, one th two thirds of the of those betting are on us rem on us coming out are those from uh, who support uh, Brexit. So, in other words, uh, people who've got plenty of money are voting that we are going to stay, and people who haven't got very much money are voting that we're coming out. That seems to actually reflect the opinion. It seems to reflect the point of view. I don't think this is actually about membership of the European Union. I think it's about the 30, 40 year consensus, called the Washington Consensus, amongst Western liberal democratic governments that neoliberalism, privatization, deregulation, lowering wages and standards of, uh, of life for ordinary working people, ending pensions arrangements that were effective, uh, stopping the job for life, all the rest of it. Uh, and yet, of course, what we've seen is the most massive rise in uh, wealth and power concentrated in fewer and fewer and fewer hands over this longer period of time. And I think most of those people who are saying they're going to vote to leave are saying this because they're dissatisfied with uh, the political arrangements that exist in society currently. They're not getting what they wanted. And that mood is beginning to affect uh, younger people. Those of us who remember the 1975 referendum uh, could see it all coming. Uh, those of us who weren't even born then are perhaps uh, wondering whether something else is possible. Indeed, that seems to be the view of a very large number of people who would call themselves socialists. They say, well, surely it's better, you know, to be international. Surely it's better to, you know, have friends and 
you know, relations with people who are like-minded. Well, how are we going to get it past the semi-fascist uh, Hungarian government? Is Turkey ever going to join? You know, the vast majority of the European Union states are currently in the grip of right-wing fever that makes the 1930s seem quite mild in comparison. Um, it's not the case that the European Union is uh, based on some grand idealistic uh, objective. Six foreign secretaries from Christian Democrat foreign secretaries from six states got together in the late 40s, early 50s on the uh, bidding of the United States of America who was about to engage in yet another war. Yeah, we have had wars. In fact, we've had nothing but wars, bloody wars. War on war on war and in Europe. Wars in Europe on the edge of the European Union, caused by the European Union. That's what's happened, is that failing empires like Britain, Belgium, Italy, Germany, have been enabled to come together uh, in alliance with the United States to maintain their previous dominance of world trade. And they're still fighting like mad to, in to, to ensure that continues. The European Union has its plan flag planted very firmly in the centre of Africa. And most of the problems of Africa uh, have their origins in the trade relations and deals that exist arising from that. So for us to say, let's stand with the world, and that includes large parts of the European, what is currently the European Union, but also large parts of Europe, which is not in the European Union. Let's have a non-racist, fair immigration policy and realise that actually this is all about the flexible labour market. This is all about having an easy to sack population, not paid very much, and undermining the power of workers to engage in uh, bargaining about their labour is the key. Time now, Graham. Thank you so much because that's five minutes up. Um, and that brings me on to, last but not least, Gareth Snell from Unison. Gareth, why do you believe that we should remain in the European Union? Thank, thank you, Trudy. Um, I've been asked to speak about Unison's position, and I, and I think I need to start by saying Unison, in this campaign, has been campaigning for a Remain vote. But that is not to say that Unison endorses the European Union as it currently stands. Um, Unison has a tradition and a history of previously opposing uh, the European Union, certainly around some of the Maastricht's work and some of the things that have happened, as has already mentioned, by centre-right governments across Europe. But what Unison believes today, and having spoken and listened to some 60,000 of our members who are employed in the public services across this country, is that leave would have a detrimental impact on those services. Workers' rights, the NHS and our living standards would all be affected if we were to turn our back on the European Union and walk away. That doesn't mean that what we have at the moment is perfect. It doesn't mean certainly that what we have can't be fought for change. You know, another Europe is possible. It is a phrase that's being finally started to be uh, used by people campaigning for a main vote. Now, this isn't about the status quo versus leaving. This, this is about articulating